I want to talk to you specifically, and hopefully not for too long, okay. about November 11th of 2012. Um, at about 3.30 in the morning, did something out of the ordinary occur with regard to Mr. Holmes? Uh, yes, it did. Um, I was sitting in the control room, uh, heard a loud bang, and the uh, individual who was watching our closed-circuit television camera said that uh, Holmes was on his back in his cell, uh, called for the air, had extra deputies come down, and we entered the cell and, and talked to him at that point. When you say you're sitting in the control room, um, I, I just want to lay a little bit of foundation for that okay. um, without getting too specific. Right. <laughs> um, Mr. Holmes was in, was he in a cell by himself? Yes. Okay. Was that cell monitored through video? Yes. And as part of your duties, um, you sit in sort of a separate room that can monitor the whole medical unit? Yes. Okay. And is it part of your duties then to also monitor the video feed from, well, I, I imagine all the cells? Right. There's, uh, on graveyards, there's one person that monitors uh, the video feeds, and there's a second person who actually does physical checks within 30 minutes. Okay. So somebody is... If, you, if somebody has to go out of the control room to do a physical check, there's somebody waiting in the control room to monitor the video feed. Yes. Okay. So um, you hear a loud bang. You're told that he's on his back in, in his cell. Yes. Did you check on the video to see what had occurred? Uh, I didn't have time at that, at that moment to check to see what had occurred because he was laying there and we were worried about his welfare. So going back to check the camera and the video feed at that time was implausible. So... Did you at some point later go back and check the video to see what had occurred? Yes. Okay. And what did you determine was sort of the cause of the loud bang that you had heard? Uh, we saw him stand up on his bed, and he um, was facing the wall uh, with his feet on the bed, and then he fell backwards away from the bed to the open floor area. Um, at some point during his fall in midair, he actually kind of rolled up almost into a fetal position, almost trying to protect himself, it, it appeared. Okay. Now, when you, uh, the jury has seen a, a, a video of this, and on that video, there are some deputies that come into the cell to talk to him. Are yes. you one of those deputies? Yes, I am. Who was the other deputy? There was uh, Deputy Zimmerman. Okay. Now, you, you said earlier you were concerned for um, Mr. Holmes um, when you had heard that loud bang, so you didn't have time to look at the video feed. Um, when you went in to speak with him, were you trying to determine what you had to do as a result of this incident? Absolutely. Okay. So kind of what you needed to do with Mr. Holmes, what was next, is that right? Correct. We wanted to determine what happened, whether it was an accident, whether it was an intentional act, uh, act um, whether there were any injuries that he was complaining of. And all of those things would inform you on um, what your responsibility was um, with regard to Mr. Holmes and his safety within your jail. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. So when you went into the cell, about how long was it before you actually got into the cell? Um, I would say within seconds. I called for the air. Um, I had to wait for responding deputies from booking. They were probably there with in 30 seconds, that's my, a guess, um, generally takes about that long to get through those doors. Is that standard protocol to bring in another deputy when you, when you on, need to go talk to Mr. Holmes? Yes, especially on, on graveyards, it's standard for any, in, any door to be opened okay. to have two deputies. So they get there and you enter the cell right away, is that right? We open the door and we kind of cross the threshold carefully and uh, speak to him. I, I started asking him questions. Um, okay. Um, where was he when you entered his, his, uh, his room? He was still on his back, uh, on the floor. Um, his feet were facing his bunk, and his head was, uh, I'm not sure if it was resting on the wall, but it was near the wall furthest away from his bunk. Excuse me, did he look up at you or respond to you when you first entered? Uh, he didn't look up at me at first. He, he was kind of looking around the cell. Um, I asked him what happened. I, I didn't get an answer of, of my first question. Okay. Um, when you um, ask that first question, can you describe then what what he was doing after you asked him? What was it? What 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 happened? Or what was the question? Uh, I don't.
don't remember the question. I, I think it might have been, are you hurt or something to that nature. Okay. Um, it took him, he didn't answer it at first for maybe 10, 15 seconds. Okay. Do um, you recall previously indicating that he just sort of stared blankly at the wall? Yes. He, he was just kind of staring around, wouldn't make eye contact with me. Um, almost, he didn't acknowledge our <laughs> presence in the cell at first. So after sort of this pause that you talked about, um, did he eventually respond to you? Yes, he did. And what did he indicate to you? I asked him if he was injured, and after a while he looked around, and the first thing he said to me is, what does that mean? Okay. When you looked at him, did you notice if he had any injuries on him? Uh, Deputy Zimmerman uh, pointed out and whispered in my ear that he had uh, noticed a slight abrasion on his arm. Did it look like a super serious injury? It, di it did not look serious. Okay. Um, Nonetheless, did you ask him if he wanted to be attended by medical staff for absolutely. that? Absolutely. Okay. 